now the Lord had said to Abraham, now at this time it was still Abraham. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Um, I'd like to start by saying when God called Abraham, he called him to out to go to a land that he will show him. But he says, I'm calling you into a place where I will show you into a place I will show you. I really need us to take note of this into a place. Get thee out of thy father's house. Get thee out of thy kindred. Get thee out of thy country into a place that I will show you into a place I will show you. That's a very important phrase to all our discussion today into a place that I will show you. I will show you, like I said, for those of you who are just joining us, um, we we'll we'll give it a, this a title, um, Rock the Boat. Rock the Boat. God says, I will point it out to you as you go into a place I will show you. In other words, it will, it will be revealed as you go to a place I will show you. This, this, this 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 makes then the journey important it was not only about a space because it wasn't about only a specific place that god was calling abraham to it was also then about the journey all the stops he's going to make all the altars we would see that he built and god appearing him appearing to him and making promises to him along the way all of those would not have been necessary and if you consider this with me all of those would not have been necessary at all if it was just about i'm pulling you out of one place and i'm plugging you into another place then everything in between the two places would not be important but it wasn't about that it was about the journey it was not only a call to a specific location it was also a call to a journey a call, a calling to an experience. Glory to God. So for me, what does this mean to us 21st century New, believe, New Testament believers, New Testament Christians? Our version, we, we have a version of this calling too, of the Abrahamic calling. We sing and we say all the time that we, uh, the Bible says that we are Abraham's seed and we sing a lot of songs along these lines. So if we are Abraham's seed, we have Abraham's kind of calling. <laughs> Glory to God. Of the 21st century New Testament Christian, our version of this calling is not, it's not a physical place like Abraham. No, it's more of a spiritual place. God is calling you into a spiritual place. It's always calling us into a place. What is this spiritual place? A place in God. It's a place in God. Hebrews 10, particularly referring to Abraham, said he looked for a city which, talking about how he left and all of this, that he looked for a city which foundation, which had foundation and whose builder and maker is God. So I'm um, uh, trying to unpack this calling of Abraham and how it relates to us in today, in, in, in the context of today. Uh, there's quite an interesting dimension to this instruction. A land that I will show you. Meaning God has not yet shown him where he is going at this point. So the departure from where he is is not exactly conditional on knowing where he is going. Is there anybody with me? Right where he is, the condition is not, his departure is not conditional on knowing where he is going. So, he is to depart where he is to where the Lord is going to take him. I, I just need us to know as, as today, as believers, as children of God today, be prepared not to see your way through sometimes because it is part of the calling. It is part of the calling to a place I will show you. Abraham left not knowing the destination but in total obedience this is this this is obedience to god in its more in its in its this is obedience to god in its most raw form 
This is obedience to God in its most fundamental form. This is not based on performance, but on trust. We have not seen God perform we, we, because we tend to wait to see God perform before we start to trust Him. <laughs> but we can trust. But can, 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 my question to you today is this: Can we trust Him before we see an outcome? Can we trust Him before we ever see an outcome, like Abraham? Can trust precede obedience? Because we don't obey God so that we can trust Him. We obey God because we trust Him. I said, read again. Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. In other words, disengage from this place. I've got a place in mind that I want to take you to. In other words, disengage from this culture because I have another culture that I want to start to teach you. In other words, disengage from this mentality because I have something else for you. Disengage from this kind of thinking. Leave this circle because I have something different that I want to start to expose you to. Is anybody listening to me today? Let go of this philosophy and this way of thinking. Abraham, Drop those lenses because I have. I want to give you a new pair of lenses. I want to give you a new pair of spectacles. I want to give you a new outlook on life. I want to start to teach you something. Drop, leave where you are so I can take you to a... Because I need to take you to somewhere else. <laughs> God is speaking to you today and speaking to me today. Because he's always calling us into a next next level. He is always calling you to a new dimension. He's always calling you to a greater dimension that is better than where you are right now. Your your calling in, in God is continuous. It's it's progressive. It keeps taking you from one place to another, from one depth to another in God. From one dimension of understanding to another, from one dimension of knowledge and revelation to another, from one dimension of maturity in God to another. God often starts by challenging. And one of the ways you know is that God starts starts by challenging, first of all, your core beliefs when He wants to take you to your next level. <laughs> because when God takes you to where He's taking you to the next level, some of this some of your ideas some of your mentality will survive it some of your uh, some of the doctrines will would not survive it some of your philosophies will not survive it because it's part is a part of your calling that god keeps giving you a mind shift it is a progressive calling it is not just a place it is a journey <laughs> So he says, get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred, and the father's house to a place that I will show you. Now this is important because at this point, Abraham does not know yet. Let's not miss the, di the dilemma that this presents. At this point, Abraham doesn't know yet exactly what this new thing is. At this point, Abraham does not know yet exactly what this new place is. But he has, he has to let go of the old all the same without having known what the new is. <laughs> this is the dilemma that every child of God faces in their purpose in God, in their calling in God, in the, on their way to the next level of their, their, their purpose in life. It, it takes being ready to embrace what God has for us even though we don't know exactly where it's going to take us. Let's not miss, the, like I said, let's not miss the dilemma this presents. Because just because we already know the, how the story ends, doesn't mean that Abraham knew at the time. Abraham doesn't know anything at this point. So what, what does Abraham really have then going for him at this point? Trust. Trust is all he has. What God is asking from Abraham at this point is trust. Because the major currency of transaction between God and Abraham at this point is trust, nothing else. No history to rely on. <laughs> no precedence to refer to. Just 
trust. God could not make the promises to Abraham at this point on the premise of precedence. And say things like, as I was with so and so and so, so I will be with you. That wasn't the case. I mean, he tells Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. He often introduced himself to many people as, 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 as the God of Abraham and the, of Isaac and the Lord thy God, the God of the father of thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But in this case, he cannot use precedence as a premise for this calling. Because there was no reference. So this is as raw and naked as trust can be. I read again verse 1. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from their father, thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Verse 2. And I will make thee of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And then verse 4. So Abraham departed. As the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abraham was seventy-five years old when he departed out of Haran. Verse six, verses six and seven. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, and unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanites were there in the land, and the Lord appeared unto Abraham, verse seven, and said unto Abraham, and said unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So, God is not making any references to the past to prove to Abraham at this point that he is able to fulfill his promise. And this is what I need you to get. The incentive is not history or some kind of track record that God already had that Abraham knew. <laughs> this is as naked, as raw, as trust can get. Abraham was not called the father of faith for nothing. It takes faith to cut off from the unknown and set out from the known and set out for the unknown. God neither disclosed the dis destination nor the duration of the journey. So God said, the only thing God says to him is to a place I will show you. I don't know for sure, but I believe it. a couple of people might have asked Abraham, so where are you going? Where is it exactly are you going? Where is God taking you? Where is this God taking you? <laughs> Does that question sound familiar to anybody under the sound of my voice today? Where? How is it going to be? Has anybody ever been asked that question? Because life asks us those questions on its own. You know, and it's pretty difficult in contemporary times because we live in a time where you are measured based on what you know. Uh, we live in a time where you are measured based on what you know. We are rewarded based on what we know. How much we can forecast and speculate and predict based on experience, experiential knowledge. And I, I, I don't know then is something we don't like to say often. We don't like to say that often because we can be taken advantage of or lose credibility when we are that brutally honest. So we have learned to pretend that we know everything so that we can continue to earn respect. But it's okay not to know because you know the one who knows. <laughs> It's okay not to know because you know the one who knows. <laughs> the one who knows the future. I like the song that we sing, uh, the hymn that says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he owns my future. The truth, the truth is, he's already gone ahead of you. He's been in the future before you were there. And he was in the beginning before you were. <laughs> Glory to God. So Abraham embarked on a journey to a destination he does not know. And he does not know how long, destination unknown, duration unknown. Not knowing the destination and duration is what makes faith and trust become important. The journey is going to be a faith experience. The journey is where all the action is. The journey. The journey. Not just the destination, like I said when we started. 
It's not just about the place. The journey, the experience is where the story is. Because a house never exists independent of the building process, right? A house exists because of the building process. That, that's what resulted in the house. The house being the end, end result of the building process. The same way a promise is never independent of its process. The journey that Abraham has to go through is a major part of the promise he received from God. <laughs> the journey is part of the promise. I need somebody to understand that today. That the journey is a part of the promise. It's not just about a promise. It's not just about the destination. It's not just about the finishing line. It's about the race. Nobody starts a race and jumps to the finishing line. The, the actual race is where victory is won. Victory or defeat is earned. <laughs> it's in the actual race. So, it's about the experience, children of God. It's about the journey. The journey that Abraham has to go through is a major part of the promise received from God. So, it's not independent of the promise. Get thee out of the country. Get thee out of thy kindred. Get thee out of thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. So, get thee out is a part of the process for the land that I will show you. So God can make you a promise, but what makes you equipped for the promise is the process that you have to go through to get to the promise. Faith is not really about knowing the destination because trust is needed for the journey. Trust is needed for the journey. Faith is, let me tell you faith, what faith is. Faith is trust in action. Faith is when you put trust to action. One of the real characteristics of trust is action. When we, we demonstrate that trust is real when we act on it. To profess trust with word of mouth is one thing, but acting on it is what makes it real trust. Professing trust with word of mouth is one thing, but acting on it is what makes it real trust. Trust that is not acted on is not real. Trust that is not acted upon is not trust, really. You can't just say, I trust you, I just can't give you my checkbook. I trust you, but I can't just leave my, home, my house and have you alone in the house while I'm out. I trust you, but I just can't give you my car. I, 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 I really trust you. Have you? I mean, I mean, does that make sense? But I just can't leave you home alone with my children. I, but I, I trust you. No, the action that you take is what makes it trust. When you trust someone, you can hand them your checkbook with the pages all signed, not worrying about what might happen. Action is a major characteristic or characteristical feature of trust. When we say we trust the Lord, we've got to be acting on it. We've got to act like we trust Him. So God said, get thee out to a place that I will show you. The critical point here is that God's intention for Abraham was for, was for Abraham to find out as he goes, to find out on the fly, to find out on, on the go, not before he sets out, but as he goes. It's a place to be revealed and without setting out for the journey, it is impossible to find that place. I'm saying that again. God's calling to Abraham to a place that will show him that he will show him is a it's it, it is a place that God will reveal through the journey and without setting out on the journey it is impossible to find that place so in order to find the place that God has for you in order to find your next level 
in order to find God's plan and purpose for you. What's next on God's calendar? What's next on heaven's agenda for you? You've got to be willing to step out. It's not going to come to you where you are. You are going to have to get on a journey with God, even though you don't know where all of this is leading to, even though you don't know where all of this is going. It's only when you step out that you begin to see it. You cannot see everything from where you are. If I'm traveling from here to the next to 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 to, to the next city, all the lights cannot be green at the same time. I have to get to a light and stop. And then when I see green, I, 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 I continue. And then when I go to the traffic light again, sometimes it's amber and then other times it's red, I stop. That's how, that's what typifies our journey in God. You cannot see everything from where you are. So knowing where you're going cannot be the condition from stepping out from where you are. Because there's a lot of things that the journey reveals. Only the journey can teach you those things. The journey is as much as a blessing then as the destination or the promise. You will find a lot of things you really never knew while on the journey. Has anybody ever been on a journey with God <laughs> and you began to see things you you thought life was like this but because of the experiences you've had now and the things that god has exposed you to some of your fundamental uh, bedrock philosophies have shifted a little bit to the left and to the right you used to believe this and you used to be firm about it but now you see that oh yeah i think it can be a little different that's because of the journey that you undertook it's not about receiving now this is this is important to understand that as god begins to take abraham on this journey it's not about him receiving the promise alone it's about becoming something it's not just about receiving something it's about becoming someone <laughs> that's what your calling is about in god the journey is what makes you become and becoming then becomes synonymous with receiving because as you become who god wants you to be you'll find out that you already have what you thought you didn't have <laughs> it's a calling to look within it's a calling to discover yourself <laughs> glory to god it's not a calling to be like somebody else it's a calling to like we discussed last week it's a calling to find something that's missing but that's missing inside not outside it's a calling to find something that's missing within not without like the woman who lost the coin and sweeps the house the important thing was that the coin is inside she doesn't have to go outside to find it i let you i let i i, I will it's 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 important to let us know at this time or at this point that what god is taking you to is a journey into you uh -huh into what he already put into you what happened with the prodigal son the bible says he came to himself he comes to himself glory to god so it is the becoming is synonymous with receiving the, the journey and the process changes you before you get to the place it transforms you it prepares you and it gives you capacity it trains you the journey builds and develops you to grow in character, in faith, in patience, in understanding, in knowledge, in temperance, in long-suffering, and all that the Bible says love is which, is, which God is, because God is love. Because everything the Bible says love is, love is patient, love is kind, love is this, that's everything that God is. God has never asked us to be anything that he himself is not. So, life in God is an adventure. You never, you're never meant to stay in one level. You're, you're meant to grow from grace to grace. From strength to strength. Life in God is an adventure. God wants to keep increasing you in knowledge of him with the goal of being more like him 
and that will involve stepping out of your comfort zone that always takes you out of place of comfort that always takes you out that always involves rocking the boat once in a while that always involves stepping out of a, a very comfortable place into the unknown everyone god is going to do something significant everyone who's in whose life god is going to do anything significant must be ready to rock the boat everyone in whose life we always going to find what god really created them for and walk in it has to be willing to rock the boat anyone who is going to fulfill purpose <laughs> who is going to be who god originally intended them to be not what the world demands them to be not what society has programmed them to be must be ready to rock the boat to step out of your comfort zone imagine you live in the basement and god lives on the 10th floor and he's trying to bring you to where he is but he has to move you from one floor to another by a gradual process imagine that's the god's process but with each new floor what happens then with each new floor he takes you you tend to think that that's that because that is better than that's the best they can ever be because the new the the first the, the 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 first floor is going to be better than the ground floor and the second floor is going to be better than the first floor and the third is going to be better than the second but just because it's better just because this one is better than the last one does not mean <laughs> oh just because where you are today is better than where you used to be does not mean that where you are going where you are right now is God's best for you. Better is most times, I tell you this, better is most times the enemy of best. The rear view mirror is good because it's good to look back and thank God, you know, for thanksgiving. But you really need to be to cannot get to your destination looking at the rear view mirror view mirror what you really need to be looking forward is forward because god has much more for you but we don't like to rock the boat we don't like to is not we don't do that by choice except it becomes extremely necessary to do that you will settle for less than God's best as long as less than God's best is convenient. You will settle for less than God's best as, le as long as less than God's best is convenient for you. What pushes us all else out of our comfort zone is inconvenience most of the time. And sometimes God seems to allow some inconvenience so that you can be pushed out of that comfort zone. So God has more for you than where you are or where you've been. He is constantly calling you to a higher level, calling you into a deeper relationship to bring you to a higher level in Him. Many people don't want to rock the boat because they don't want to fail. They don't want to make mistakes let me say this mistakes and failure are both part of learning what parent wants a child to work walk but does not expect them to fall and get up a couple of times before they get it right god's curriculum for you includes mistakes and failure he may not plan mistakes and failure for you but he knows that you are going to make mistakes and fail sometimes he knows where you will fall at what point you will fall and he's already made a plan in the process or in his curriculum as a part of your learning process so what are you still afraid of if failure and mistakes are already part of 
if God already knew them and already made provisions for it, what else should you be afraid of? Failure is not the opposite of success. It is part of it. God wants... I, 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 I begin to bring this home by saying, God wants you to want more. God wants you to want more. But not more of things, but more of Him. God wants you to want more of Him. Because as you begin to desire more of Him, He begins to give you a deeper experience. He begins to take you on a faith walk. He begins to take you on a journey. He begins to reveal His plan and purpose for you through this journey. Wanting more of Him is the most adventurous lifestyle anyone can ever live. And this brings me to the last part of this talking about Peter um, Jesus comes to his disciples walking on water because they had first he had said let us go over to the other side the scripture says as they set out while they were in the middle of the journey the sea was boisterous and it was stormy and the wind was boisterous and they were so afraid they were really terrified. They were afraid. And don't forget, this was Jesus. This whole trip was instructed, directed, inspired by Jesus in the first place. So it was stormy. And then the Bible says, at the middle, in the middle of the night, Jesus comes to them walking on water, and they are afraid. But Jesus answers and says to them, Fear not, for it is I. <laughs> Fear not, for it is I. There's so much you unpack in this. But let me stay focused on what we're talking about today. Then Peter says something very powerful. Peter says something very, very important. Very, very, very critical. He said, Master, if it is you, bid me to come. This statement is the difference between natural and the supernatural. This statement is the difference between sitting on the boat and walking on water. This statement is the difference between receiving and becoming. This statement is the difference between normal and extraordinary. This statement is the difference between less and more. Bearing in mind that when, when I say between less and more, bearing in mind that more is relative to whatever, when you say more, it's relative to where you are. Knowing that 20, for example, is more than zero. And that 40 is more than 20 makes us know that more is a relative term. The difference, more, more is not a fixed factor. It's a progressive word. So, the, the rest of the disciples are satisfied knowing Jesus is coming. Jesus is finally on the scene. Finally, the, the master is here. Jesus is coming to the boat. And Jesus is coming to help them. Satisfied knowing that Jesus is around. But what Jesus does and how he comes in to help them is a fascinating thing to Peter. Peter wants more than just him coming to help them or just coming to them. Peter wants to step out of the boat to meet Jesus where he is. <laughs> Peter wants to meet him where he is. The rest are happy to have him come on board with them. Peter, on the other hand, is not just satisfied. He wants to meet him where he is. 
Peter is not just satisfied with the basic. All right, he's coming, we'll be okay. <laughs> he's not satisfied with the bottom line. Oh, we'll be all right, we'll be fine. Not satisfied with being safe. Just being safe. Most of us like the idea of being safe. We like to play it safe, you know. Uh, better safe than sorry is something we all like to say. But nobody has ever won a championship by playing safe. He wants, Peter wants to be where the master is. Peter is adventurous, walking with God, children of God, is always an adventure. Peter realized that it is the delight of Jesus to be able to be like him, not only to receive from him. So, realizing that Jesus' mission was not just to play the superhero, but to teach them his ways and show them the ways of the Father was something Peter already knew. Let me say this, child of God, part of your calling in God, in fact, the deepest part is not receiving stuff from God, but to know Him and to be like Him. Receiving from Him is secondary. Being like Him is primary. And there is no way we can really know Him without being willing to rock the boat without being really willing to step out with him in trust, without willing, being willing to take on the journey to the unknown, because it is that willingness that opens the door to more. It is that willingness that always opens the door to more in God. God is calling you to a deeper place in him. God wants you, I do sense, that many of us are in times of our lives when God wants to start bringing us into greater dimensions of in his purpose, in his plan for us. But it's not going to come to us where we are. We have to be willing to step out in faith. <laughs> Glory. God is calling you into a journey to the unknown. And the major gas, the, the only gas you need in your tank, the major currency you need to spend on this journey is trusting him. For everyone that trusts in him, he will never put.